Okay, so we continue from where we stopped. Okay, so over here, we will be talking about a virtual learning environment. Okay, just give me a minute. <clears throat> okay, so when we talk about VLEs, we are talking about uh, an online community. We're talking about a platform that allows students, okay, that allows learners to learn over the internet, okay, which is why we say virtual learning environment, okay. The opposite of virtual learning environment is the physical learning environment, which is a classroom, okay, a physical classroom, okay. But when it's happening over the internet, we refer to it as a virtual learning environment where over the internet you are completing your studies, okay, learners are completing the education, okay. So VLEs are used to allow students and teachers to use learning and assessment materials online. Okay, so this is the function of a VLE. Okay, so what are some of the features that you would find that would enable, that would allow this function to be fulfilled? So a, a feature would be a wall or a timeline to contain posts from students and teachers. Okay, so just like on social media, you have a wall, you have a timeline of posts. Similarly, in a VLE, you would have a wall, you can call it a timeline that would show you the posts that teachers, educators, students have posted, okay? Next, you would have a notice board for announcements about upcoming events, about the course, okay? Then you would be able to share media files, okay? Then you would be able to take quizzes or MCQ exams on the platform itself, and they would be graded automatically. Okay, so certain platforms, they have quizzes, they have exams that you can take on the platform itself. And as soon as you click the submit button, it marks it for you and gives you your marks. Okay, then you will have tools for submitting assignments. Okay, then there would be a login system where you will have to enter your username, password. Sometimes they may ask you for an OTP authentication, or what you call two-factor authentication sometimes. Okay, various features would be in this login system. Then there would be a document editor where you can type your answers, you can bold certain parts, you can upload an image to it, you can underline, okay, that's what you call a document editor, okay. Then you would have a grade book that would show you all your marks for each subject, for each course, what is your average, what is your GPA, okay, whether you have passed, whether you have failed, all this information you would find in your grade book, okay. And then you have something also, another feature that you would find is statistics and analytics, okay? So it would give you how much of hours you have completed studying, how many hours you have studied, what are the courses remaining, what are the subjects remaining, okay? How many hours you have to be dedicating for each of these subjects, okay? These are some of the features, okay? This is another feature that you would be finding in a VLE, okay? So over here, I have put a link that when you open, it would give you, it's a very short video, about how Moodle, okay, so there is a VLE called Moodle, okay, and this is an example of a VLE, okay, Moodle is an example of a VLE, so if you, if it's possible, do open this link, it, it would give you a short description about some of the features that you can find on Moodle, okay, right, so with that, we have come to the end of VLEs, okay, virtual learning environments, next, we move on to something known as wikis, okay, so a wiki is a website or a database that is developed by a number of collaborating users, okay? So you have users from all over the world. It's basically multiple users that voluntarily come together to develop information, to put information together, sorry, to put information together, all of whom can add and edit a document, okay? So when we refer to wikis, wikis are also an example of an online community because you get users from all over the world bringing their own information together, okay? So they bring all their information together and then what you have is you have what you call a website or you can say a database of information, okay? So what are some of the examples? Examples are online encyclopedia. Wikipedia would be actually the best example I can give you. So Wikipedia is one of the largest source of information, okay, one of the largest sources of information, but Wikipedia does not belong to one person, it does not belong to one organization, you have users from all over the world contributing information to it, okay, so it's known as a wiki. So what is the function of a wiki? The function of a wiki is to allow members of the community to collaborate, to work together in order to build and edit web pages, okay. So what are some of the features? So feature number one is each user will have an account. Okay, members will have to sign up. Okay, and once they sign up, once they complete the registration process, each user will have an account. Using that account, they can contribute, they can submit information, they can make changes to existing information on the wiki. Okay, so their account will allow users to track 
which edits have been made by which member of the community. Then there would be an edit button where users can click and make changes if they feel the information needs to be updated or the information is wrong. Okay, then you would have search tools where users can search for information. Okay, so over here I have given you an, a link and if you can open this link, it will give you a basic understanding of how Wikipedia functions. Okay, how does Wikipedia get users from all over the world to collaborate? Okay, so if possible, do check out this video. It would give you a better understanding of an online community under the topic of wikis. Okay, do check it out. Okay, right. So, so far we, in this video, we have completed VLEs and then we completed wikis. And now we move on to one more, which is known as forums. Okay, so a forum is also an online community. It is also a community that users come on together through the internet. Okay, but the function is slightly different. Okay, so what do for forums do? So it's a website, okay? It's a website or a web page where users can post comments and information and reply to other users' comments. Forums are also known as bulletin boards or message boards. So just to summarize, summarize it, a forum is a place where you can post questions. Users from all over the world can come together to answer your question. Or you can open up a topic for discussion. Or you can create a poll. And you can get opinions from people from all over the world. Okay? So this is what you call a forum. Okay? It can be called a forum. Or you can call it a bulletin board. Or you can even call it a message board. Okay? So it is a place where a lot of discussion happens. Okay? So examples are Google Groups, Stack Overflow is an excellent example. Quora is an excellent example. Student Room. Do check out these examples. Then it would give you a better understanding of what a forum is. So, for example, Stack Overflow is a lot to do with programming. Okay, so if you go and check Stack Overflow, okay, you can post a question on Stack Overflow. Programmers from all over the world can come give you their best answer. Just because they post an answer, it doesn't mean that the answer is correct. They are just sharing their own opinion with you, their own understanding with you. And it's up to you to follow it or not. And if you do find it useful, for example, on Stack Overflow, you can say, I think you can, thumb, you can give it a thumbs up, which means you found this answer helpful. Or you can give it a thumbs down saying you did not find this useful. Okay, if somebody, for example, gives you an answer, you can comment on that answer saying, you know what, I would recommend you make the following changes to your answer. Okay, so forums are actually places where you can have a lot of discussions and you can have users from all over the world joining in the discussion. Okay, right. So over here, the function has been mentioned. Okay, so it's uh, provide members of the community with online spaces for structured discussion. Okay, so you open up a topic and then you get users commenting with their own opinions. Okay, and then you can reply to each of those comments. So that's why we call it such structured discussion. Okay, and then posts on the forum are arranged in topics of threads. So like on social media, we have tags. On forums, you have something called threads where you can categorize your topic. Okay, so for example, you can say it's about HTML, it's about Java, it's about programming, it's about, I don't know, databases, for example. You can categorize your discussions. Okay, so what are some of the features that you would find in a forum? So feature number one is you can have groups where you can have a circle of people who can contribute to the discussion. Okay, you can choose who can contribute. Okay, so you can have your own groups. Then you can have moderators. So moderators, they are also members, but they have the right to allow or block posts for members. Okay, so moderators basically are monitoring, are checking the information that is being posted. So if anybody violates the rules, if anybody starts spamming the group, if anybody starts posting irrelevant content, the moderator will have a right to remove that person, block the person from posting. Okay, so this is the function of a moderator. Then you have administrators, people who are in charge of the groups, okay? So they are just like moderators, they have similar rights, but they will also have some additional rights, like being able to promote or demote members, okay? So a moderator, for example, will be able to, I'm just giving you an example, will be able to only allow a block post, okay? But an administrator will be allowed to block, will be allowed to block posts plus remove members from a group, okay? So an administrator will have, a, will have a few, I will have a, what you call additional rights, okay? But then you will have posts, okay, where you can post a topic, you can post a discussion, you can post a question, okay? And then you will have threads. So threads are just like hashtags where you can categorize what you're talking about. Then you will have ratings, okay? So not 
all forums will have ratings. Some of the forums have ratings, okay? And then you can privately message somebody or you can directly message a user, okay? This is another feature that you would find on a forum, okay? Now, many forum include some safety features, okay? Like I told you, when you use these online communities, safety has to be a high priority, okay? How can we keep users comfortable? How can we keep them safe? Okay, otherwise users will not return, okay? So forums have certain safety features such as word URL censoring. So if you put a URL that may contain dis disturbing content, automatically the forum may block it, okay? Ignore or block, okay, rules and responsible or acceptable use policies and a report button, for example. So these are some of the safety features that you would find built into a forum so that everybody has a pleasant experience on the forum, okay? So these are some of the features that would exist on a forum to keep users safe, to keep users having a pleasant time, okay? So, so far we have gone through three. In this particular video, we have gone through three. Okay, so we started with really in this video and then we moved on to wikis <clears throat> and then we moved on to forums, okay? So we'll do one more in this video. We'll just do one more. The next is something which we call video sharing and photo sharing sites. So these are online communities that are dedicated to sharing of videos and photos. Yes, you already have an example in mind. Yes, you have Instagram and you have YouTube. Okay, so these two are two ideal examples for video sharing and photo sharing. Okay, so YouTube will be the best example for video sharing and Instagram would be the best example for photo sharing. Okay, so these sites allow people to access and share content created and uploaded by members of the community. So some other examples have been given as well. Do check them out, okay? So Vimeo, Flickr, 500px, Jiffy, and YouTube. These are some of the examples that are found in your textbook, okay? So what is the function of, oh, I made a mistake over here. It should be function of video sharing and photo sharing. Okay, so the function of uh, this platform is, sorry, the function of this community is these sites allow people to access and share content created and upload by members of the community, okay? So, for example, if you take YouTube, you can upload your own videos on YouTube and other users can browse it, they can view it, they can comment on it, they can, what do you call, dislike it, they can like it, okay? They can subscribe to your channel, okay? So if you go through some of the features of video sharing and photo sharing, so number one, you would have user accounts and profiles, okay, where each user would have their own account, okay? And then they would have a profile. So I have told you some of the things that you would find in a profile. So in a profile, you would have a username, you would have a description of yourself, okay? Then there would be a content management system where you can manage the photos you upload, you can manage the videos that you upload, okay? Then you would have tags where you can categorize your content. You would have ratings. So for example, on YouTube, you do not have ratings, but for example, maybe on some of these platforms, you may find the option of rating. So out of five stars, you can rate the video or the photo, for example, okay? Then you would be able to comment, okay? And then you would also have something known as third-party integration, where content that you upload on these sites can be directly shared onto your social media profile. Okay, where the content, for example, if you take YouTube, YouTube does give you third party integration where you can directly share your video or you can share somebody else's video directly on WhatsApp, directly onto YouTube, directly onto Instagram. Okay, so this is what you call third party integration where it allows you to connect with a different party, with a different website, with a different app. Okay, so these are some of the features that you would find in a video sharing and photo sharing site. Okay, so uh if you were to come out of this so we have a few two more so we have social bookmarking and we have blogs and blogs remaining to be completed so in our next video we will go through these two remaining and then we have a few more slides about staying safe online okay right so uh see you in the next video